بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Judgment God is going to judge them individually yeah. yes and then he's going to determine their uh, the fate in the hereafter yeah. but you because you have already had some information about Islam Yes, the question that Mansur was asking you is what is stopping you from acknowledging and... But I'm not saying it's impossible that Muhammad is a prophet. I'm not saying that... Yeah, so if there is a possibility, then that is the most basic requirement to become a Muslim. To believe that God is... Allah is God and he's, He doesn't have any partners. He's the one true God and worthy, the only God worthy of worship and that Muhammad is his messenger. This, in a nutshell, is, is something which will give you entry into Islam. Obviously after that comes the other five pillars of Islam which you have to follow and so on. So it's, it's a gradual process. We don't expect you to accept Islam and then on the on day one accomplish all the requirements. It's a gradual process. So this is, like I said, all you need to do in order for you to accept Islam is to acknowledge that Allah is God and Muhammad is his messenger. That's all. But at the, at the end of the day, isn't it also true that it's not, an, maybe as you said, it's not enough with your faith. You also need good work, good performances. So if you think about this way, first thing, you have to have the deep, solid convictions in your heart. Right. Islam is true. Then from that conviction, you declare with your tongue. This is the testimony that Islam is true. And then you put that testimony and the conviction that you are hard in your heart into actions by manifesting those actions of do's and don'ts with your limbs. So it's just like a three-part process. In your heart, you have deep conviction. You testify it with your tongue. It says, yes, I believe in it. I affirm it. And then you put those beliefs into actions by really submitting to God by saying, yes, I am going to worship you and be grateful to you in the way and the manners that you and your, and your prophet has demonstrated to, God, to, to, to you. So for example, if the prophet says, this is how you show grateful to God by praying five times a day, you do that action through your limbs. So that limbs, your action is now being consistent with what you've declared and affirmed and what you deeply held you know, in your heart as a deep rooted conviction. But could, could, you, could you say that the person could still be saved even if he does, even if he only has that belief and let's say he would die a short period after? Yeah, if he dies then yeah. that is his destiny, you know? That okay. his declaration itself will, will be enough to enter him into Islam. Okay. Now whether he had the opportunity to fulfill that uh, testimony of his into actions, because it's, it's a different knows, thing. God knows his intentions. Yeah, his intention, yeah. If had he lived, whether he would be fully submitting or not, right? So if somebody has declared already sufficient enough God, according to the promise of God, God will uh, enter him in his grace, paradise, or gender. That, that seems like something that's very common between different religions, that you, you get to heaven by working hard. But that's something I find sort of unique within Christianity, that there is a belief that you get saved by your faith alone, not your word. This is, it, it says, work, sorry, faith without works is dead. Have you heard of that in the Bible? In the Bible yeah, itself. It says that, yeah. And it also says God will judge each person by the works. If they're not saved, isn't it? Yeah, but where, how There's are you saved? Alone. By the way, you know, you talked about something unique in, in Christianity. In Christianity, can you be saved without the shedding of blood? I mean, in Christianity, you have, in the Bible, you have the concept of uh, sacrifice. Exactly. So that's the question. Can you be saved without the shedding of blood? I mean, according to the Christian belief, uh, you know, uh, everyone has to accept the, 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 uh, the sacrifice of Jesus. So the answer is no, right? Everyone. You cannot be saved yeah, you, yeah, you without need, the shedding of yeah, blood? You need uh, to take, uh, you know, believe, uh, yeah. you need to accept Jesus that he took your place. Uh, now, basically. why would you believe in a religion that says, the only way you can have salvation is by human sacrifice. But they also believe that it was God Himself who sacrificed. Well, God doesn't die. They say that. Well, the they body. say it was a it was a body which was flesh, which was human. So the human died. God did not die. That is what they claim. But God, uh, the, because God doesn't is, die. This you know is that. also interesting in the Bible. This is something I learned recently. Yeah. When someone acts like 100% accordingly to the will of God, 
that person's actions can actually be described as if it is God who is acting. I can give an example in... Yeah, but that doesn't answer my question. My question is, why would you believe in a religion that says you need to be saved only by humans believing in human sacrifice? Human sacrifice is something that God in the Old Testament says it wouldn't even cross his mind. It yeah. wouldn't, he would never... Do you have a verse for that? Or? Yeah, I can, I can fetch it quite easily. It's, it's, there is definitely a verse for that. But God in the Old Testament, yeah, ask, please, any, please do if you ask any know. Jewish person, they'll tell you they don't believe in human sacrifice. But it's only believe, the Christians do. They do believe in animal sacrifice, and so do you, don't you? Yeah, but animal sacrifice, not for sin atonement. Isn't it? No, it's in, not. Why do you no, do it in no, Islam no. on no. the holiday? In, 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 the... in fact, this is in the New Testament. It says God doesn't require... Why, uh, do, you, why do you do it then in Islam? Why because it's a, it's a practice of... Uh, it's, it's more like, uh, what is it, reminding us of the sacrifice of Abraham, okay. of obedience to God, because oh, Abraham was tested, and his obedience to God, he passed that test. But, okay. And his son, remember, his son who was human was not sacrificed. What was sacrificed instead was an animal. But so, it, yeah. in fact, it agrees with the sacrifices that we do. And by the way, that sacrifice Abraham was going to do was not for sin atonement either. It was, like I said, a test of God Almighty. And guess what? There was a substitution. Okay? And that's the reason we believe that God doesn't desire sacrifices and that too of a human being in order for your sins to be forgiven. Do you believe in the substitution of Jesus as well? That's, that's a different story. But first I want to understand from you, why would you believe in a religion that talks about human sacrifice? I was just about to say that even the Jews, I believe, I believe they, they believe that... Not human sacrifice. They believe the animals yeah, I know. for their sins. Yeah, it? but unintentional sins. Read, sins. Bro, read it up honestly. What you need to do is you need to read up that human sacrifice is abhorred by God. It's something God detests. Yeah, I would like to, if you can reference where, where the Bible says human sacrifice like is it's, uh, prohibited. Yeah, you know the sacrifice that Baal, they used to perform to Baal, burning yeah, the children. Yeah. It is that verse. I don't remember the, the what do you say, the yeah, chapter can, and verse. I can, I can try to look it up. So. Yeah, but this is something, this is not a secret, it's something well known. And and you will definitely not get human sacrifice in any context from the Jewish people. But at the same time, they do believe he was more than human. Who? Christians, they believe he was a God-man. So who died on the cross, God or man? Uh, as I've said, when, when, a, when a human's actions act accordingly to God's will, the, the human's actions can be described as it is God. Who act. died, I asked you. I didn't ask you who obeyed. Who died on the cross? Well, if, if Man or God? If you understand the context, and you can say everything that the, that, that the son does, that, that man does, if he is doing everything accordingly to God's Sorry, everything will. the son does? Everything the father does, the son is what you're saying. No, I'm just trying to... to uh, connect this to, to Jesus. If Jesus is acting accordingly, 100% to God's will, then according to biblical concept, his actions can be described as it is God's actions. So when Jesus worshipped... I'm just saying that the no, biblical concept... No, 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 hear me concept. out. When Jesus worshipped God, are yeah. you saying God was worshipping as well? If it was 100% according to, to God's will, I of think... Of course it was. Yeah. Jesus was worshipping yeah. the Father 100% according to the will of the Father. Does that mean the father was also worshipping? Absolutely not. Well, I, I, I think it really it's important to understand like biblical Hebrew concepts. You don't need understood. to understand biblical Hebrew. Worship. God doesn't worship. Simple as that, my friend. Do you agree? But Jesus did worship. But isn't there a hadith that says that t God is time? Have you heard about it? Yes, I have. And what does time, that mean? Isn't time a creation? Yeah, God is time no, in the sense is, that... How is time a creation? Yeah. Isn't it? Well, tell me, what is time? First Doesn't a scientist say that time is creation? Uh, what is time? Matter, space, time. No, what is time? What is time? That's a good, that's a big uh, scientist. Because scientist. If, you, if you say time is a creation, yeah. what is time? Well, it's part of the universe, isn't it? Like, <laughs> but it's a you know, scientific you know, miracle. And you see, mystery, that is, mystery, isn't it? It's not a mystery. You know, you need to understand the context of that hadith. Well, what is yeah. the time? Al Al Allah says, do not curse time. That means, for example, if somebody uh, falls upon bad times, mm -hmm. yeah, like he's had some misfortune or something, okay. do not curse time in the sense that Allah is the one, without the permission of Allah, nothing happens. Everything in time, everything in creation happens because of Allah. It doesn't mean, it doesn't mean in the sense that Allah changes his, uh, uh, sorry, becomes a creation or something like that. So you need to, Allah also swears, he takes oath by time, you know, that means man, by, by time, Allah says, mankind is in loss. Mm -hmm. Yes? Mm -hmm. Okay. Illa ladina except the ones who believe. Yeah? Mm -hmm. 
وأعمل الصالحات and those who do good وتواسوا بالحق وتواسوا بالصدق yes and those who call upon حق is it call upon was it truth and patience and patience yes and sabr so this is something that Allah says so it's it's, it's meant in a metaphorical sense that you shouldn't curse time because all this is ordained or, or is destined by God Almighty. So God is not literally time? Not literally, of course. Okay. So what do you... But now going... Saying God is not by the way, why did you change the topic from when I asked you, can you be saved without the human sacrifice to what the hadith says? Because there's no relevance here. Well, I already answered according to Christianity, no, you cannot get saved unless you accept Jesus' sacrifice. So you don't, unless God sacrifices or human sacrifice? I mean, I'm just saying what Christianity says. But no, but you need to understand the difference between God and human. doesn't always um, agree or believe in what Christians believe in. Yeah. What's your name? Uh, Martin. 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 Yeah. Martin is quite open-minded from the discussions that we have. Yeah. And from this, what we'll say is, if you compare the concept of God, in Christianity or in Hinduism or whatever you want to compare with mm -hmm. ask yourself which concept of God makes sense to you intellectually emotionally reasonably logically well, if you find that the concept of God in Islam is finely tuned your heart and your mind mm -hmm. resonates with this that is acceptable then you know where the truth lies. But if you find a concept in which there is a God who has a son and the son is sent to be killed, who's meant to be eternal and so on, none of that makes sense, then you would know that this is something that is not really, cannot be from God. Because God would not reveal a concept about him, which is contradictory. You, yeah. And your heart and your mind will go against it. But and also God's own, created, God, God himself says that he's, that he cannot die. understanding to know him yeah. and appreciate him in, in the way he is. He's not going to reveal to you something that it is impossible for you to understand and accept. Do you know in Islam, in Islam, Allah doesn't ex, uh, expect from anyone any sacrifice, human or animal. Allah is able to forgive you with his mercy and his kindness and his love that's, and justice. That, that's why you need to work yourself. Heaven. No, no, like you said, if somebody accepts the shahada, yes, and he dies in a few minutes, then he'll go to paradise. He doesn't need to work anything. You, His conviction. But would that, would that be enough if he had a life full of sin before? You know what yes, happens yes. They, if, he had a, if he had a life full of sin before, all his past sins no, even Hitler, will be forgiven. Even Hitler. If Hitler accepts. Islam, Islam after killing six million Jews. Yes, if Allah them. wants him to be in Jannah, no, he will no justice for just the to, Jews. Just to explain that, God is just uh -huh. and yeah. God is merciful and gracious. Okay. So how do we understand okay. both of these yeah, concepts? How do we balance? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so what we by say the way, is, killing doesn't mean Allah is just going to forgive you. Obviously, okay. killing requires uh, punishment, even for a Muslim. Okay. So, yes. for the crimes or the sins that a Muslim or a non-Muslim, a Muslim that has done, say for a Muslim, it doesn't mean that God will automatically forgive them. God can punish a Muslim in hellfire for millions and zillions and billions of years, but eventually, because they had... Is that for everyone? Or? Um, if you want me to finish, okay, then I will explain, right? So, how... Does one enter paradise? We say the final destination, mm -hmm. whoever submits to God and surrenders to God and worships God alone and accepts Prophet Muhammad, mm -hmm. they will finally return in paradise because that is the key to paradise. Submission, but yeah. in, in, in the meantime, if they have done a lot of wrong, a lot of sins, right? Crime against God, and God doesn't uh, forgive those sins. He may punish this, that particular individual for a long time. Now, compared to eternity, a long time is nothing. A hundred years, a million years is nothing. So this particular individual may be cleansed in hellfire, being punished for the crime, what, what, what they have done, but eventually they will return to paradise. So a non-Muslim, when they become a Muslim, all their past sins are forgiven. Any good that they have done, it's been taken forward. That is the, gr the grace and mercy of God. But they are not really forgiven if they are put in hellfire, is it? I mean, you're not really forgiving someone if you're still going to punish them. No, no, I'm saying when a non-Muslim yeah. becomes a Muslim, okay. okay, that is what happens. Their past sins are forgiven. Well, but that, that question is, uh, anyway, the question you asked about, 
someone who's committed a lot of lot of murders yeah, and killing. Yeah. But you know, we are talking generally. Generally, when a non-Muslim becomes a Muslim, mm -hmm. he's forgiven of his past sins. Yes. Okay. So unless obviously you have taken the life of another person, which is a different thing in Islam, that is punishable by law, regardless of whether you are Muslim or non-Muslim. It is life for a life. Very simple as that. Mm -hmm. So let's not uh, let's keep that in perspective. But what you need to understand is that most people who become Muslim by, by, by conviction is in the belief that God is one and Muhammad is his messenger. Like I said, that is enough for them to forgive their past sins and then start a new chapter, a new life with Islam as their religion, which they are guaranteed paradise if they die. Yes, obviously provided Allah's mercy and then you haven't committed any murders or anything like that for which you'll be hold, held accountable for if you did so just because you became a muslim doesn't mean you go scot-free okay so allah is just and on the day of judgment he will not be unjust to anyone but the question the the main question i asked you is like in islam there's a concept of forgiveness without the shedding of anyone's blood and i think shedding the blood of an innocent animal or a human for atonement of sin is unjust do you agree but it's biblical nevertheless, even for the Jews. Isn't biblical it? doesn't mean it's not unjust. Are you saying Bible doesn't have mistakes in it? Well, I, I didn't say that everything in the Bible is true. I don't know how exactly... So that brings to the question about when we examine scripture, yeah. which scripture that we have now in our hands today is purely from God without any adulteration, without any alteration, without any change or corruption. And you'll find that the one that stands out clearly without any ambiguity is the Quran. And this is what we are inviting you to. Read and reflect on it. Read about Prophet Muhammad a bit more because you've already known about him. And ask yourself, if he wasn't the Prophet of God, how do we even account for all the things that you know, he said and he's done? It doesn't, I'm sorry, it does not add up because if he's not a prophet of God then he's an imposter what are his motives none of this can be explained and reconciled and this is what we are saying look reflect on his life study it examine it and then you will see that this is a prophet and a messenger of God no doubt because the doubt will go when you examine and and be critical in your examination people often don't criti critically examine they're just here on the surface rumors here and there, surface reading in the internet or surface watching in the internet. Highlighted and voices. Yeah. And they, they think, oh, well, that's why the prophet is not a prophet of God, not acceptable. But when you go deep in his life, look, do you know how he died and what he left behind when, in terms of material position? I don't know exactly. I mean, uh, he, even that enough should be sufficient. But he did create an, uh, some sort of uh, caliphate, didn't he, before he died? Yeah. He changed the whole of Arabian Peninsula yeah. and how his companions moved and, and you know, almost like within 30 years they, United they became them to so, believe in one God. so powerful, like even politically. But look at the Prophet. He was sleeping on a bed made of, you see these um, dead palm trees, leaves? He was he, putting, his, putting his head on a, on a, like a brick. He had only a few utensils to drink, few date tamas to eat, and maybe a few little bit of barley here and there, or some kind of grains, and that was all. That is his material possession that he left behind. Often he would go weeks without eating anything apart from dates and water, and yet he was controlling the whole of Arabian Peninsula as a prophet, as a leader, as a statesman. Do you really think this adds up to someone who is an imposter, a fake, a prophet of God? Think about a prophet of God, he's come here to deliver a message and that's exactly how it's reflected in his life. A fake person who is offered to be the king, to have all the rich and all the wealth, to have any woman he wants, why would he decline that offer? That's what the Arabs did at one point saying, look, don't say that, you know, don't worship all these multiple gods, but worship one God. Stop doing that. You just tell us what you want. If you want us to make you the king, we'll make you the king. If you want money and the wealth, we'll give you all that you want. If you want women, just name them. Why would he reject those um, offers? A fake person will say, ah, oh, there you go. Now I've accomplished all of that. I'll take it. But he says, no, even at one point he said, you know, at one point he said, 
even if you give me the sun in one hand and the moon in one hand, I will not stop this call of La ilaha illallah, of worship God and none else. That is the way, the life, the action, and the character of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Study and examine deeply with a critical mind and you will realize that this is the Prophet that you've been waiting for to accept and believe. Have, and you, read, once have you read the Quran? Once you do that, yeah, I think it will be much easier for you in this yeah. journey. Okay. If you want a copy, we can get you a copy. You know, I mean, uh, I think I, I, I think I already got one. Uh, okay. Last one, I uh, last time I was in okay, uh, London. Good. You know, I'm a tourist. <laughs> Where are you from? I'm from Sweden. Actually. Okay, that's yeah. good. A lot of Muslims.